Well, I don't know if the six days in the home was good or bad. Ended up 100 plus, 107 miles for the six days, 117 for the whole week. Slept okay after it all, but now I'm back to three or four hours of sleep, wide awake at 2 a.m., worked on the podcast videos, and waited around so it didn't seem like I was completely insane out walking and running at two in the morning. Thought four o'clock, yeah, I can do four o'clock. So I'm out here uh, putting in the miles, probably gonna do about 10 tomorrow this morning. And uh, it's just kind of crazy though that, um, you know, I like, wish I could train like a normal person, but it's like, you know, I was doing 100 mile weeks for years until uh, 2019, I it was the first year I was under 5,000, I think for the past four or five years, walking down 24th Street. It's fairly well lit, mainly the reason I'm out here. And uh, then of course, this past 2020 had the injury and stuff, but it's just kind of like, I've got a training program where, you know, maybe do an hour and a half in the morning, 40 minutes in the evening, which is what all the best at marathon or world-class marathoners basically do. But I never feel like that's enough. Like I've been doing that past, couple days and going ah I just want to get out and do more so it's definitely an addiction <laughs> I guess a healthy positive one I guess as long as I'm not injured but it's just what my body wants and what it needs so out here and we shall see how the rest of the day goes get this done and hit the door dash as Mars Blackman said decades ago in the Nike Air Jordan commercials it's got to be the shoes in a recent article I saw in Outside Magazine where they did a study, it is the shoes, as they talk about on Let's Run, which would almost be called Let's Rant about the shoes. You know, it looks like 2019, when the super shoes showed up and everybody could have them, that there was definitely improvements. They looked at uh, 10 years of data from, the four, from four major marathons, so they had over 4,000 data points, and they noticed that from you know, 2010 to 2018, there wasn't really any improvement and they were looking at the top 50 runners in each race men and women but then in 2019 when the shoes became widely available wow there was definitely improvement men improved about uh one percent women two percent and this is you know we're talking elite athletes and it basically they even looked at uh athletes who ran the same race in 2018 versus 2019 with the shoe with old school shoes and the new super shoes and they even improved you know one percent or so so it is definitely shoes you know the carbon plate the extra cushioning and the foam really help one good news for me as i'm finishing up i've done six miles before 6 a.m finishing up 10 miles this morning is one good news is that uh slower runners benefit even more from the shoes and that's kind of why you see the difference in men and women it's not anything to do with sex it just has to do with speed and then of course you know um wind resistance so if you're around running men are running 13 miles an hour the shoes aren't going to improve their times as much because the drag really drags you <laughs> and basically and so women who are slower they don't have as much drag so when they're going faster and so slower runners someone like myself who right now is probably a five hour marathoner Put a pair of those bad boys on me they probably work pretty good now of course uh not really a fan of nike they're too skinny and scrawny and they're way too expensive so i'm not gonna get any super shoes anytime soon probably go with the hokas there was a second company to come out with them and uh we really want ultra to come out with them but i'm not sure ultra you know because it's all about the stack height and i don't know if you can keep a zero draft and still keep that speaking of the super shoes of course you know in 2018 kipchoge had them broke two hours in the marathon and then of course and right after him that next morning Bridget Koskai broke the women's world record ran 214 and then Sarah Hall who doesn't run for Nike but is in the ASICS super shoes she's improved greatly from like 226 to 220 so as Morris Blackman aka Spike Lee said in the Nike commercials it's got to be the shoes almost done with my 10 miler I just kind of got up really early this morning, like two, three in the morning, did some uh, YouTube work, and then thought, well, it's four o'clock, I can go out. It won't seem super crazy. 
there's a couple of run groups here in town, uh, the Bagels and Blenders and the uh, Donut Shop crew. They've both been going on for decades and they run at 4.30, which I wouldn't want to do regularly, but sometimes when you can't sleep, you might as well just get out and move. In fact, I was listening to Dr. Drew the other day and he was talking about the new sleep research is showing, you know, taking the medicines and stuff that gets you to sleep isn't good. He's just like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, you will sleep eventually because you just, your body has to do it. So that's just the way to do it. So now I just get up. Uh, one of the things I really loved about playing poker all the time was you can play around the clock and kind of getting back into it a little bit, even though it's still not legal in the United States, except for, uh, I think Philadelphia, New Jersey and Vegas. Be nice to get back to being legal status, but I've been playing some fixed limit with you know nickel and dime shit. But anyway, so today the workout was a 45 minute walk and then a 45 minute run. Now, last decade was all about how far I could go, and so I didn't really do a lot of running. And what little running I did was more running breaks from the walking, and I never ran for more than a minute or two. Obviously, my goal is in the marathon, I'm gonna need to do some more running, and when I started coaching. Uh, adults in the Bigger Citizens Project in 2009, I, of course, used the Jeff Galloway Way's uh, run-walk method. And I think it really works great for all runners, but especially people who are new or older athletes or people who, you know, you're gonna spend more than three or four hours out there in a marathon, you need to do some run-walking. And, you know, he's changed his things now. It used to give you a minute walk, but he finds that people slow down too much, which isn't my issue. So yeah, because I'll be at races and you'll see them running in their Jeff Galloway run walk and they almost come to a complete stop when they walk and it's kind of irritating when you're behind them. So you want to glide into the walk and glide out of the walk and kind of like a swan landing on a lake. So um, he now is saying to do 30 second walk breaks, but that's just not enough. 45 seconds around what I like. So, and like, of course he does it based on your pace. And if, you know, my pace right now, he wants me to like walk 30 seconds, run 30 seconds, which is just way too much turkey jerky. And uh, then uh, the pace I'd want to run a marathon at like eight minute miles, he says, you know, 30 second walk, four or so minute run. Well, I like the nickel, I call it the nickel and dime run. I kind of like running to the five, walking for a minute, run to the 10, walk for a minute. So kind of a one, four pattern. And I think that's what I'll be sticking with. It worked really well this evening. And this evening, <laughs> it's this morning. It's just so dark. Sun's just now coming up. Not even seven o'clock, I got my 10 miles in. So that's what I'm, my plan is on that. And then I think instead of coming out here and trying to do 10, which takes me three hours, I think 10K is a better number. And then I've got to find something to do to burn off some energy. And I'm seriously thinking of getting a rower. I've been looking at the Nordic track rowers and I think it would be good to have that. It's not a weight bearing. Might be able to burn some calories and build up some more cardio and get get myself back from this congestive heart failure type of thing. In fact, I had a really bad cough on the uh, second lap of my F loop. My F loop's two and a half miles. I'm on Elm Street right now. I just had this terrible cough and they say that there's a congestive heart failure cough and I think it is because whenever I get to a certain heart rate, it just comes on. So maybe a rower will help with that. But at least I know it'll help with just give me something when I want to work out at four in the morning and don't want to be walking out here with the uh, urban outdoorsman. A couple of them were sleeping on the sidewalk and I had to go around this morning. To get faster, I'm gonna to have to get lighter because that's the whole VO2 max. It's by how many grams you are and then the oxygen should take in. I saw an article in Outside Magazine about healthy eating. And of course, like always, it says, you know, that fads and all these fad diets and supplements and all this don't really work. And often just dieting itself, you'll lose weight, but then you usually gain it back and oftentimes just gain even more. So the key is, you know, try and get whole foods, you know, well, processed foods, because processed foods, they take out a lot of the nutritious stuff and they add a lot of stuff in there to get you to eat more sugar and salt. And that's something I've been working on over the years and need to get better at. Problem is finding a uh, good food, you know, it means you gotta shop all the time or, you know, and also it's just, it's expensive compared to, you know, you can go to all these fast food joints and get two burgers for $3 or 
two tacos for a buck and yet you know if you want to get a salad or vegetables and things like that it's a lot more expensive and you got to go in the stores and all that you know of course you know and poorer people in fact i often say i wish if i had a lot of money the one of the first things i would do is hire a live-in chef i remember when the uh, shack was playing for the lakers and he was getting older and getting bigger the lakers actually hired a chef because they knew if they could keep him leaner he would play longer and so that's something you got to do so you know try and eat more whole foods um also you know ignore the all the crazy diets and uh don't the supplements don't work superfoods you know and just be an intuitive eater you know think about things you eat that make you feel good and stay away from things that don't make you feel good but also you have to not obsess over stuff you know kind of that 80 20 rule 80 percent of the time if you're doing good you can have that 20 percent and i often see a lot of people i know who are really good athletes and really good shape and they kind of do that more so you know they they live a good clean life you know on the eating side but then they you know are known to have a cheesecake here or some beers and you have to do that take it all into account and so it's as always it you know there's seven billion of us and we're all an experiment of one and you just got to keep trying things for me you know trying to eat cleaner and eat a little better and i think the fasting thing works for me too it just seems like something that humans have been doing forever and why not sim emulate them in a way yeah it's kind of a fad but i think it's something that works for me i've been dropping some weight and uh, i feel better in fact after I, if i stop eating around four or five in the afternoon definitely get some good sleep except for today when i just woke up wide awake got my four or five hours in and so i four seven o'clock got 10 miles in gonna take a quick shower and then out and do some door dashing i know all us youtubers are always asking you to subscribe but i'm at 99 i like to get to 100 subscribers and of course now youtube's changed their thing once again i mean i used to be able to get a little bit of youtube money back but now they made it so you have to have a thousand subscribers to get some money but they now are actually putting ads on us video makers who don't have a thousand subscribers. So if you subscribe, that'd be awesome. And then maybe they can give me back some of that YouTube money that they're making on those ads. And of course, you know, I'm gonna put it into the uh, endurance community, buying shoes, traveling to races and running races. So if you could please, please uh, hit that subscribe button and I'd greatly appreciate it.